Hello everyone, I'm Michael from SharePoint Pro. Have you ever created a Power Automate flow only to be confronted with the warning, actions in this flow may result in an infinite trigger loop? Today I'm going to discuss what that means, why Power Automate is warning you, and what you can do about it. First off, what does that mean? Well, you're going to see this warning any time a step in your flow is, may trigger off the same flow, which may cause it to go into an infinite loop. A common example of this is using the trigger when an item is created or modified in SharePoint. And then you update an item within that SharePoint list and you cause the flow to be triggered again. So how do we stop this from occurring? We could create a condition in the flow so that the flow is only updates the item on a given set of circumstances. For example, if the status is inactive, the flow may set the status to active. Now, there will be one redundant call, but on the second flow, the status will already be active, so it will not update again, and therefore it will not go into an infinite loop. However, what would happen if we needed to update a different field? What if the logic is not possible? Or, due to MS Flow's API restrictions, we can't afford a redundant flow for every single flow that's triggered. That's what I'm going to delve into today. So what's the solution? Well, all you need to do is determine which user account the connector in MS Flow is using. And then in MS Flow settings, set the condition so that it will not trigger if the user updates the item. I will now show you how to create an unlicensed user and then use that user account in the connector in Power Automate. Depending on your role, you may need to contact your IT, IT department to create your user. Microsoft has a bad habit of changing their UI. So it's possible that things may have changed slightly by the time you view this. So first click the Microsoft Waffle and then find the admin. From here, click show all and users and active users. Now click add a user and choose a username that will be obvious to you. I'll choose Power Automate user. Okay, click next and choose create a user without a product license. Click next and click next. And click finish adding. Now, take note of the username and password. We'll need that later. Now we are back in Power Automate. We need to set up the connections. I find that it's good business practice to share the flows with the dedicated MS Flow user. This way, if an employee leaves, we still have access to the MS Flows and they'll continue to work without interruption. However, for this demonstration, I'll just set up the connections. So, find your flow and click edit on the connections and then manage connection and log in with the user you just created. Okay, now we have the connection set up, we can go into the flow and update each step that communicates with SharePoint using the connection that we just created. So to do that, we click the three dots next to each step, and then we go to my connections, and we set up the connection we just created. Now what this is doing is it's ensuring that any time this MS Flow talks to SharePoint, it uses the, the Power Automate user we just created. This has its benefits. We can go into SharePoint and we can see the last modified user. And if it's a Power Automate user, we know that that was last modified by the flow. And this really does help in debugging. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to set up the trigger condition for this flow to ensure that if this flow edits the list item, it won't trigger another flow. To do that, we just find the trigger step, click the three dots and click settings. And then in the trigger conditions, we click add. Now, I've got a, a line of code here that I'll show in the screen at the bottom, and I'll also put in the description. And this just excludes the user, so to ensure that the trigger does not fire if this, if this user edits the list item. That's it, we're done. Okay, so by setting up the trigger condition to not run any time our Power Automate user updates the item, 
we can be confident that we won't cause an infinite loop in our flow. So now let's run through all the steps we just discussed.